Welcome back, citizens, to our second episode in our Judge Dredd in the World of 2000 AD introduction series. I'm Judge Wolf. And I'm Severian. And today we'll be talking about equipment and requisition. So this game works a little bit different. Citizens uh, get money, but judges basically have most things given to them by the Hall of Justice. So something to consider when playing this game no matter what, is most individuals in Judge Dredd's world are actually unemployed and receive welfare, and that's it. In fact, the game specifically states that most characters would not even have a monthly stipend. All that money would be going to um, their food and their housing. So instead of a monthly stipend for a job, because 90% of the people are unemployed, everything is based on your reputation. In order to determine starting money, you roll a reputation dice pool and a luck dice pool and then multiply that value by 20. If it's less than 100, then you bump it up to 100. So for judges, we, we do the exact same thing, but instead of money, it's requisition. So it replenishes, essentially you are going to the armory, you're using your pole in order to get equipment out, and then you return it at the end of the mission. So before we look at Judge Nall's requisition, um, by the way, Judge Noll, what did you uh, uh, what did you end up rolling for your initial requisition? So I had a total of four d6 to roll, and I multiplied the result by twenty to get two hundred eighty credits. Two hundred eighty credits, so not much, but we'll end up buffering that up by a little bit by group re uh, requisition. So. Um, one of the nice things about being a judge, even though you don't get paid, is that you do get initial stuff and everybody gets it. So the first thing you're gonna get is a lawmaster bike. Right? This is your main mode of transportation. It also has uh, a laser cannon on it and bike cannons. You'll get a lawgiver, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, because I'm gonna do something just a little bit different. Uh, you get a day stick, which is a titanium stick often used to subdue enemies. You get a boot knife, which uh, our poor cadets were was the only thing they had at the end of the last game. And uh, if you ever read any of the comics, Judge Dredd loves to yell boot knife anytime he uses it. And then... We have... I just looked at my morph box and I had it on morph. I wonder if my voice has been different the entire time. Huh. Anyways. Uh... <laughs> That'll be funny if it was. Uh, I think it was. Oh, man. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> More Fox. Great program, by the way. Uh, shout out to More Fox. Uh, so another thing you can get it, or you get is your handcuffs, and then you get what's called a birdie, which is a lie detector. And then finally, you get your uniform and helmet. Uh, the helmet has a radio and a respirator. So... The most common thing that judges spend a requisition on are extra investigation devices and extra ammo for their lawgiver. Or if they're skilled using rifles, um, they uh, might get a law rod, or if they're skilled using shotguns, they might get a stump gun. So I want to talk about the lawgiver real quick. In the game that we were playing before, I believe the year we were using was 2130. At the time, the lawgiver Mark II was in service, and uh, Judge Nall. Uh, what was your what was your favorite setting on that guy? Say again. The stun, right? Uh, you got really quiet there for some reason too. Um, yeah, definitely the stun, right? Most most of the uh, characters like to use that stun. Well, we're moving back to 2099 when the Lawgiver Mark One was in service. Um, so the Lawgiver Mark One does not have a stun setting. And uh, so I actually contacted one of the authors of this book, the, not, not Judge Dredd, but the, the RPG man, and asked him what he thought. Should I just you know, break the rules and give you guys Mark twos or what? So what we kind of discussed was is that you guys, you four, are gonna get a special R&D model of the Mark I. So we'll call it the Mark I-B. Um, the Mark 1B will have all of the standard Mark 1 stuff. It's not fully automatic, okay? You can't fire stump, uh, stump grenades from it. But it'll have a stun set. And I was trying to figure out what to do to kind of make it um, a little bit different. 
And so what it'll be, since it's a prototype weapon, is that it'll follow all the Mark I rules and it'll have the stun setting, but if you roll triple one on your attack roll, you're basically gonna suffer from the booby track uh, shock value, which is 2d6 electricity and you drop the weapon. Well, I look forward to rolling three ones the first time I fire it. Yeah, absolutely, right? And um, I don't know if your mic got a far away from your mouth or if you adjusted some of your settings, but you got you got quiet. I have you bumped up a little bit on the NDI source, but you, you are a little bit quiet, um, it, even in my headphones. I'm not sure. I didn't change there, anything. Now you're good. I don't know. It must have just been where the mic was. Maybe I've shortened my mic. <laughs> so aside from, and I, yeah, I can't wait for you to roll triple ones on that too. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure uh, definitely somebody will. So there's also group requisition. This is based on the reputation of the organization, which in turn is based on the size. So for judges, we're going to use the local group. In other words, the justice system is massive uh, in this world, but you won't have access to, you know, uh, what was it? It was some some ridiculous value for these inner inner city units. So you will not have a reputation of 130 and a requisition cap of 5,300. I'm sorry. What you will have access to it's probably around 700 because but that's shared as a group because it'll be like your watch or your team or your squad so group requisition is a pool for everybody so like let's say judge Steele is like i got my lawgiver i got my club i'm good to go but maybe you need you're like hey you know what i would you know like to get a hold of maybe an acetylene torch because we might have to cut through stuff so you could pull from that pool. Um, so it's not an individual. So it's best to decide on requisition well ahead of time. And so, or at least have a couple of ideas. So let's talk a little bit about um, Judge Nall's requisition. So you said you rolled, uh, what's your reputation again? My reputation is only one. Okay, and then what was your luck? My luck is six, which gives me a 3d6 pool. And so you rolled 46 multiplied by 20, 20. and then you got 280. So mm -hmm. considering that a lot of the earlier individuals only start with 100, that's not too, too bad. Um, looking at some of the uh, requisition pools in the back of the, the manual, that is a little low for a judge. Um, but if you look, at some of the street judges, you actually add in the requisition, or I'm sorry, it's a reputation. So that could account for, you know, or maybe people are just freaked out by you because you're a side judge. I think that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's let's think about this. There's a, there's a big old list of equipment. What do you think, Sev, about all of the equipment that's in this game? You think there's too much, too little? How you feel? Yeah. Um, it's it's a nice mix of equipment. I, I think there's uh, enough equipment in there without it being too overwhelming. Uh, there's a nice mix of uh, different sort of uh, equipment for, you know, if you want to go in stealth or, or just go in, you know, kick in the door and throw explosives everywhere. There's a little bit of gadgets for everything you want to do. <laughs> Cadet Luna. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, I was skimming through. I thought there was a, a, a nice um, mix of things into here. Um, the prices were one of the things that I really liked, too, because it, it definitely keeps, you know, you guys from uh, trying to requisition insane stuff with your, your day one equipment. Yeah, I took a look at some of the cybernetics, but they are in the hundreds of thousands of credits. <laughs> yes, and and that's how it should be, right? Because yeah. this isn't like, this is, well, maybe it is in some place. There's actually a storyline that follows people who cut off their own limbs to for cybernetics. But, you know, I don't think judges would be going around doing that, so it's probably for the <laughs> best. And if, worst case scenario, if you get an arm blown off or something, I as a as a, the magnanimous GM that I am, I'll probably go do so let's talk briefly about quality. Um, I'm gonna throw an image up here. There we go. Um, so, it should be mine. Yes. So, 
quality is an important component of this game for two reasons. Number one is uh, that better equipment is, you know, adds to your dice pool. But this also means that you can use improvised equipment as well. So basically the way that it works is if you don't have the piece of equipment that is necessary to do a roll, you're not allowed to do the roll. You can't shoot a gun if you don't have a gun. Now, you can cobble things together, but that would be improvised. And what improvised does is it takes dice away. So you can still do the roll, but it's not gonna be nearly as, you know, as high end. So for example, let's say you were stuck in an asylum somewhere where there's a bunch of people who are wanting to eat you. Maybe you could cobble together a bow, right? It's not gonna be great, but it'll work. As time goes by, you might pick up equipment that's better and great. And what this does is this can add to either your defense dice pool, like in armor. It could add to your shooting dice pool or your computer dice pool or your interrogation dice pool, but it costs money. So down the road, you may be able to requisition a high quality Mark I or a high quality Mark II or a high quality long. Uh, doing this also allows you to add upgrades, and there's a huge list of upgrades in this game. Um, so the higher the quality, the better it does. Note that equipment is also more expensive in terms of requisition, right? You, I don't think Judge Nall, no matter even if he is a side judge, he's fresh out of the academy. Nobody's going to give him the master quality lawgiver, right? That was held by Judge Fargo himself or something, right? I mean, it's just not going to happen. By the way, quiz time. Who's Judge Fargo? Uh, he, Dredd was cloned from him, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Dredd and uh, Rico? Yes. So um, that was where they pulled the storyline from for the Judge Dredd movie, um, which was terrible. <laughs> uh, they got the city right. They didn't get Dredd right. The 2012 got Dredd right, but they didn't get the city right. Um, yeah, so Judge Fargo was actually the guy that came up with the, the justice system. In, uh, originally, you would have judges uh, w working side by side by actual real law enforcement, like law enforcement that we know about today. Um, so equipment in this game uh, is available to some people. Some of it's legal, uh, some of it's restricted, so you can get it, uh, but it is uh, not easy to get a hold of. It, it, it might only be usable in certain places. For example, smoking. Smoking is legal-ish. It would be a restricted item. Why? Because you can't smoke in your own home. It's bad for you. But you can go to the smokatorium and smoke. Uh, proscribed items are those that are banned by the Justice Department. And these are going to fall underneath things like drugs. Uh, you have military equipment, which is uh, not allowable to the normal citizen, but city defense. Um, uh, or block sit, uh, sit defense and even some of the personal security detachments are allowed and then you have the judi judicial system which is only judges equipment itself is broken up into general gear services and food which you won't need to really worry about as judges uh, that kind of thing's given to you uh, weapons armor the customization of the equipment drugs cybernetics and vehicles each section is broken up by a how to read table and then some of the particulars and special traits. For example, for weapons, there are different damage types, which you should familiarize yourself with, because there are certain armor that are penetrated by certain types of ammo. Um, it's definitely a benefit to read the information on your weapons and equipment. So after the charts, or in some of the cases before the charts, there's little blurbs on the different equipment, what it looks like, what it's used for, so on and so forth. And sometimes there's information. For example, the lawgiver, if you run out of spe uh, specific types of ammunition, you can spend a luck die to get a round of that type of ammo. So Judge Nall, now that I've ran my mouth for a little bit, <laughs> talk to me about some of the things that you might requisition as Judge Nall using your own requisition and let's say um, the other judges don't need too much and you got maybe a, a pool of three to four hundred from the group requisition. Okay so uh, because of my lower uh, 
skills and, and melee and ranged combat. I'm, I'm not going to be the one in the group uh, to be heavily relied on in combat, so I'm not really going to uh, requisition any weapons. Uh, I'm sticking to a lot of gadgets. So one of the things I noticed in this system uh, that the judges don't get that they did get in the other one is the bleeper. Mm. Uh, and I, I feel like that's a very uh, useful item. So I'm going to get a bleeper for 200 and infrared goggles also. Um, I, I think those could come in handy and they're not integrated into the helmet in this system either. No, they're not. Uh, so that's another 100. It'll put me at 300. Uh, that doesn't leave a whole lot more uh, credits for anything else. So I, I think I'm also going to throw in a couple uh, chemical light sticks because they're only five a piece and they could be some useful in some situations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, that's, that's, that's good luck. So I, I do, I think that's, that's good. Again, I'm not going to, you, you shouldn't have to worry about it if you were an actual judge, you know, but as a GM, I'm not going to make you worry about food and water unless, Hey, you're going out into the wastelands, right? You're going out mm -hmm. into the cursed earth. Then I want to know what you're going to pick up and I'll give you extra. Um, yeah, I was actually very surprised at the limited amount of equipment that you get as a judge in this one. So, but I, I think that's good, right? It gives you, it doesn't, you don't have a bag of fix everything. Yeah. So that pretty much is it for equipment. Uh, I would like to note that the, there, as much as I'm like, oh God, I love this book. I love this book, right? There, there is something I'm, I'm not too fond of. Um, the vehicles are handled in the section of equipment and the roles are handled there. And it's really simplistic. For some reason, I've always been a, let's get in a, a vehicle and go, you know, mow some guys down. Um, but it's not in there. It's very small. And it just has to mostly to do with turns and so on and so forth. One last note about equipment is that equipment at its base provides the ability to do something. Again, like I said, you can do a scan, shoot a gun. Improvised removes dice, but you can still do it. Um, and this is one of the reasons why it's important for you not to worry too much about high quality equipment at the beginning because this adds to your base dice pool, which means it's governed by your max initial dice pool. So in the next video, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, dice rolls outside of combat. I'm not sure when that's gonna happen, but it's gonna be here very soon before our uh, initial game into um, Judge Dredd in the world of 2000 AD. So until then, this is Judge Wolf. And Severian. And we'll see you out on the street, citizens.